My March for JRPGs ended up being surprisingly busy in the best way, with two interesting and very different JRPGs to play. With so many JRPGs released towards the end of the month, at the beginning I was able to focus on the Caligula effect Ovidos, before diving back into a series I love with Nelke and the legendary alchemist towards the end that can be pretty busy as I focused on the two. Since I was focusing, I was only able to fit a couple of other games in with a much needed jump into my long running backlog game and a revisit it to a demo that I really enjoyed. So in what was a focused but fun-filled month of games, these are the JRPGs I played in March. Finally being able to play the Caligula Effect Ovidos was an absolute treat. I've been interested in it for a couple of years at this point since I missed its Vita release and then got even more excited for it when I saw its Japanese trailers. And while I've seen mixed reviews on the Ovidos version since posting my own, I personally had a lot of fun discovering its unique high school world and combat and its incredible soundtrack that I'm still listening to. Throughout my 30 hours with it as a smooth high school dungeon crawler to run through, I really enjoyed the fast feeling of busting through its dungeons and throwing enemies into the air as I carefully plan my turns with its replay mechanic that shows you your turn before you execute it. And with great music as a backdrop to doing all this, it felt satisfying to play being one of the first dungeon crawlers I've played in a while and the new additions in UI make it much better than the Vita version looked. Aside from combat, I also really liked and am still intrigued by its characters with all of their dark pasts and the sheer amount to talk to. And since I didn't get too far into any of their social episodes, the Caligula Effect Overdose joins my ever-growing pile of games I've discovered in the last year that I want to go back to, as I'd like to see why some of the characters act the way that they do, since they all seem to have some sort of personal struggle, with some being subtle, some very obvious at times, and all of them looking interesting. With so many people to talk to and an atmosphere I like in its troubled world, the Caligula Effect Overdose is what I hoped it'd be. And while I don't know when exactly I'll get back to it, since I now have both the English and Japanese versions, I'm considering if I want to play it again sooner or later for either study or story as I want to see more of its endings and play with the musician route more. So as a JRPG with a lot of things to do in an interesting world, I enjoyed my time with this experience. Ever since I liked the town building aspect of Atelier Maruru DX, I've been intrigued by the similar ideas in the simulation based take on the Atelier series, Nelke and the Legendary Alchemists. I wanted to know how similar these mechanics would be to Maruru and finally got my chance to find out on the last few days of March, and quickly found out that it's those mechanics but fully developed this time, and a bit more simulation than RPG, which I'm sure will be hit or miss for some fans, but do create an interesting system in its own right. It's a a little slow starting with its tutorials, but after that the system opens up to reveal an adjusted version of the Atelier system where synthesis, shops, gathering, and growing crops all work into each other. And because of that, keeping an eye on things and trying to create a well-oiled, prospering city can be satisfying, as you get that feeling of growing and improving something that I like in the other Atelier games as I see the alchemists grow. Just this time, it's a town that I can visually see growing, which is kind of cool. As the town grows too, I'm meeting more characters from Atelier including ones I love like Lydian Soul and others I'm meeting for the first time like Mari. And this aspect keeps things from getting too serious in the big task of growing a bear town and it's helping me make my decision on which Atelier trilogy I want to dive into next in my free time. My first 10 hours with Nelke in March were a lot of fun, even if there's a bit of a learning curve to go through for getting into the rhythm of things, but I think that's the case for most Atelier games so it was enjoyable to learn and I'm still enjoying discovering more characters from its series. I will have more to say about it in my review for sure, especially since my experience with it during April has been a bit more up and down at times, but if you enjoy the crafting portion of Atelier like I do, doing it on this bigger scale is certainly interesting, even if I don't think it'll be as great as the upcoming Atelier Lelour if you're trying to pick between the two. I'll be continuing to play it throughout this month, but I will say that while it's a different kind of Atelier game, it does still have that kind of addictive quality so far that has me looking forward to playing it again soon every time I stop playing. 
Atelier Lulua came out on March 26th in Japan, but before that I was playing the Japanese Lulua demo on and off when I had spare moments throughout the month to play more with its crafting and battle system since I liked them so much when I first played the demo. In fact, I think I ended up doing almost everything you can possibly do in it before unlocking everything else by buying the full game. I did multiple side quests that involved making battle items like bombs, although a few of them went beyond the area of Achilles, meaning I couldn't fully finish some of them. But I did all the ones I could and partially did the rest to get to know the synthesis and book quest system more, and still found them a lot of fun in their new smooth versions. On top of that, I also tried the battle system more after another Famitsu livestream made the five people party look interesting and got to play with Atelia Totori's Piana in my potty, which was cool. I love her new design in Lulua and had fun seeing how she played. And as I was playing, the system also reminded me of the combat system in Lydian Soul with the way that it's support characters reacted based on my moves, and I'm sure that this will be even better with a full party. At the time, I was mostly just playing for fun and a bit of Japanese practice, but coincidentally, my boyfriend ended up buying Lulua in Japanese, so I was pleased to see that my demo save file could be loaded into the full game when I tried it again at the start of April. So if they put this demo out in English, hopefully they'll do the same thing so that everyone can get a few extra battle items before the full game is out too. And speaking of demos, in case anyone is interested in trying Lulua, the demo that was originally just in Famitsu is now available for everyone to play on the Japanese PSN store and Nintendo eShop. And while it's in Japanese, I thought I'd share it for those who want to try it regardless of the language barrier anyway, and some of the gathering stuff I think is more than doable without any Japanese, so go try it if that sounds like fun, and comment and please let me know if you do. As for me, after playing more, Atelier Lulua is still definitely one of my most anticipated JRPGs of this year. And I look forward to trying it more next month and we'll have to toss up between playing this or Caligula Overdose for Japanese study if I get any free time in April. I realized as I was making this that I finished Death End Request right on March 1st, so I had to give it a little mention in this video because I like to include everything I played in the month, even though unfortunately I didn't get a chance to go back to it throughout the rest of the month. Luckily, my last day with Death End Request was particularly interesting as I got its normal ending and true ending within a span of a few hours by grinding through battles in the final dungeon for currency to buy items for the fetch quests required to get the true ending. This saw me go beyond level 99 is somewhere around 400 for Sheena, which makes me want to hit the actual level cap of 999 sometime since it wasn't that hard to do with the high level monsters. So if I ever jump back in, that will hopefully be something I do. After getting the true ending and making my review, I had still hoped to get to Death End Request again sometime in March for other reasons, as I'd realized I'd unintentionally bought the deluxe edition of the game that came with the season pass. So now I have so much DLC for it in the form of additional costumes and dungeons, and even items that I now realize would have helped me get to that true ending faster. And I'd love to jump into the game again just to see if they're enjoyable and worth that extra cost, along with seeing more of its bad ends. I'm trying to keep Death End Request on my PS4 hard drive as incentive to do it, but April also doesn't look like it's slowing down for releases, so we'll see. But I do hope that the extra dungeons and new playable character are interesting as I did really enjoy its combat system. I had good intentions for Persona 2 in March, and while a few things got in the way of my time with it, I was able to get some, albeit not much time into it last month. Just after I'd finished Death End Request, between making content I was trying not to play anything new, and decided I would play Atelier Lulua for Japanese study and Persona 2 for any other gaming time. So when there was a night when I just wanted to play something in English, I pulled out my trusty PS Vita TV and played a little Persona 2, which was nice to play on my TV with my PS4 controller as I hadn't done that in a while. In saying that, I will be honest and say I didn't have the best session with it. Sometimes Persona 2 can be really full of random battles while running around the field, and it was just one of those sessions where it felt like every step I took, I was falling into an enemy and couldn't make any big progress as I was stopping and starting my dungeon run so much. And while I usually try play past these points to get to something more enjoyable, the dungeon I'm in right now I'm pretty sure is one of the last few, so with how maze-like it is, I didn't get that far. At all. I had planned to try and rectify that this 
month with another play session with my Vita one day, and I even brought it with me in my bag one day when I was going out, pulled it out to play, and found out I had unfortunately forgotten to take my memory card out of the PS Vita TV. So I was without both my save file and the game, which was annoying, but completely my own fault. I do hope to get back to it this month to try and have a better time with that dungeon, and with a little luck, hopefully I'll be able to start another one. But like with Death End Request, this will also depend on the amount of free time I get. Ever since it got delayed to April, Zonkey Zero has been the game I've had my eye on for this month and is still the main one I want to play, as it should be out now while I make this. I've been highly interested in it since late last year when I tried its demo, and thanks to its premise of clones, life cycles, and rebirth, and the fact that it's done by the team that worked on Danganronpa, I'm being very curious to see what it is, so I'm looking forward to trying the full game in English. I'm still also playing Nelke and the Legendary Alchemist, and I'm over 25 hours in. So finishing that might delay my Zonkey Zero plans for a few days, but since I have a feeling that Nelke will clock in around the 30 to 40 hour mark for me, I hope to at least get to Zonkey Zero within the first week of its release, and in the meantime we'll continue building my town in Nelke and finding ways to make it better. As for the rest of April, it seems to be one of those good, lucky months where I have enough money for another game in the second half, partially thanks to last month doing better than usual YouTube-wise, which I'm very thankful to you all for, for supporting and watching watching my videos, it really does help and it really makes me happy. So because of that, I'm hoping to pick up Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age for Switch towards the end of the month to review on top of Zonkey Zero and to finally finish it. I've talked before about how I played the PS2 version of Final Fantasy XII a lot when I was in high school and university, but a lot of that was during exam time so I ended up putting it down quickly and then having trouble getting back into it. So with the portability of the Switch and the Zodiac Age's new additions to make it smoother, I hope that this can be the excuse I need to play it since I've unfortunately kept the PS4 version of it on my shelf for the past couple of years as well. So now with two JRPGs to keep me busy until May, I'm looking forward to finally playing Zonkey Zero, finishing Final Fantasy XII, and maybe trying other great titles in between too, and what looks like it'll be another fun month of back-to-back -back JRPGs. Thank you for watching this video, let me know in the comments below what you played in March and what you plan to play this month. And as I like to do every March episode, since this video marks two years of my JRPGs I played series on YouTube, I just wanted to say thanks to anyone who watches these videos. I love reading your comments and seeing what you're playing, and it's always such a nice way to start a new month and finish the lost. So just thank you always for your incredibly kind support, and I hope to see you all in the comments throughout the next lot of JRPGs I played videos for this year as well. You can like and share this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more JRPG content like this, and ring that bell to get notifications on whenever I post so you don't miss a thing. You can check out more videos here, and you can find me on social media on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at JRPG Jungle. Links to those will be in the description below, along with a list of all the games I mentioned in this video. Until next time, thank you, bye!